This is one of the latest releases from San Martin, and this time it's neither Seiko nor Rolex homage, and yes, it is quite good. However, before you rush to your credit cards and buy this watch, there are definitely a few things that I think you need to be aware of, which I will of course share in this video, including my considerations about the price positioning of this watch. Hello and welcome to the channel. Yes, San Martin straight off the beaten path here of Rolexes and Seiko homages and into a big unknown. Well, <laughs> not too far actually. This is of course a homage to Tudor Black Bay 58. The set of familiar snowflake hands and overall proportions kind of gives it away. However, even though there are a lot of similarities to Tudor watch, there are quite a few differences as well, which of course, based on your point of view, could be a good or a bad thing. I don't particularly like my homages to be a total clomages, so I do appreciate a bit of originality in San Martin's design here, and I will of course highlight all the differences I picked up in this review. For full disclosure, San Martin offered me this watch for almost half a price, which at the price of around $330 is not an inconsiderable amount, hence I thought it is only fair to disclose it for a full transparency. Also, I only spent a limited time with this watch, and even though I go through quite a bit of details in this video, I will most likely need to do a follow-up in a week or so once I spend more time with this watch. Price. I will of course talk in more details about the price later in this video, so for now let's just look at availability options. So this watch is available in two colorways, black and blue, both I believe will be or actually already are quite popular based on the numbers sold since the introduction of this watch a few weeks ago. And they offer two movement options, a Hong Kong Precision Technologies one, PT5000 and the Swiss made Celita SW200, priced $330 30 and about 460 US dollars based on the movement chosen. I have here the black version with PT5000 movement inside. Usual Samatan packaging, the watch is well protected and we get a set of useful tools and a Loctite screw sticking compound to prevent bracelet screws from getting loose. We also get a signed and stamped warranty card and a user manual with warranty details. San Martin offers 24 months warranty here. And San Martin also included a NATO style strap, a nice touch. I'm not sure though if this will be a standard offering or this is just one off as part of some kind of flash deal that they rendered at the time. Dimensions. The case measures exactly 40 mm across, coin edge bezel protrudes ever so slightly and the visual diameter of the watch is actually more defined by the bezel, so if we measure the bezel, we get 40.5 mm exactly. Now, this is the first difference from Tudor watch. Just as a reminder, Tudor Black Bear 58 measures 39 mm in diameter and 1.5 mm does make a bit of a difference here, so something to keep in mind. We have 20mm lugs and I really appreciate how thin San Martin made the case here, only 11.5mm. This is of course due to the slim profile of the movement used in this watch. Lug tape to lug tape is just under 48mm, however, measuring those protruding links on the bracelet we get about 54.5mm. The links do curve down though, however, this is still a bit on the long side and I will talk more about it when we examine the bracelet in more detail. And we have a nice taper on the bracelet down to about 18mm if we include the rivets or 165 if we don't. And the clasp is 18mm wide. On the fully supplied stainless steel bracelet, this watch weighs 145 grams. Not too heavy, not too light. The full length bracelet should cover about 8.25 inch wrist or somewhere around 21 cm. I will put this watch on different bracelets later in this video. 
Dial. Dial is dark matte black. I like the choice of matte color here. It makes the mirror polished applied our indices enhance kind of pop and play in the light. The golden color indices and hands are generously filled with loom. Of course, we get a familiar snowflake hands. Hands seem very well proportioned with minute and second hands stretching elegantly all the way to the minute chaptering. San Martin used here what they call GS Crafts which is apparently their proprietary in-house process of making the watch hands with faces looking razor sharp and flat, so they get almost mirror polished appearance and bounce the light nicely. And the same as on some other watches from San Martin, they used a cap to cover the pinion. It is subtle detail, but I think it gives the handset a nice and finished look. We have very simple writing at the bottom of the dial reminding us that this is an automatic watch and it has 200 meters of water resistance and we have San Martin hexagon applied logo on the top of the dial. There is no date on this watch, which is of course goes very much in line with to the Black Bay 58 theme. And we have a printed minute chapter ring running around the perimeter of the dial. I like the dial, everything seems to be in proportion and even though the background of the dial is matte black, the hands and applied indices definitely stand out and make the dial not only look very good, but of course very legible as well. In terms of any quality control issues on the dial, I couldn't find any. Everything aligns and looks very clean. And of course, Loom. Loom is very, very strong, on par with other San Martin divers, so you are unlikely to be disappointed here. Crystal. Based on the San Martin's product listing, we have a domed sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating. I can definitely confirm that this is a sapphire crystal and the anti-reflective coating is quite effective. The dial is very legible. The crystal is only slightly domed and is almost flush to the bezel. And I like the flat dial distortion this crystal produces at a very sharp viewing angle. Bezel. We have 120 clicks unidirectional ceramic insert bezel here. The color scheme of the bezel is very similar to the retro diver from San Martin. However, this bezel is a bit wider. Of course, we get a red triangle at 12 o'clock with a loomed peep, obviously giving a nod to Tudor Black Bay color scheme. The bezel is almost flat and it is glossy. Actually, it is kind of reflective. Not destructively reflective, but reflective nevertheless. And this is one of more pronounced deviations from the Tudor Black Bay style, where Tudor used an aluminum insert matte black bezel. Now, if we turn this San Martin bezel, well, the bezel action is excellent. 120 clicks, the resistance is good. The coin edge is easy to grip, pretty much no backplay. The sound is crisp and reassuring. And it aligns pretty much perfectly. Moving on to the case, the finishing is really good. Brushing on top and on the flanks and polished beveled edges. I like that almost satin-like horizontal brushing of the size of the case. There are no crown guards and we have a signed screw-down crown with a familiar San Martin shark logo on it. The back of the case has clean circular brushing and we have a screw-on case back with no markings. Just a reminder, San Martin declares 200 meters of water resistance, making this a very practical watch. Movement. As I mentioned at the start, this watch houses the Caliber PT5000 movement, which is a clone of a very popular ETA 2824 Swiss movement. There are a few of those clones produced by various manufacturers around the world since ETA patent has expired some years ago. It beats at 28,800 bits per hour, resulting in that smooth sweep of a second hand. It also hacks, hand winds and has about 38 hours of power reserve. And it also has a quick set date function. This brings me to another point that we need to be aware of when buying this watch. This watch, of course, does not have a date, while the movement does have a date function, which, of course, results in the ghost position of the crown. To be honest, not a big deal, but something to be aware of.
As we can see on the time grapher, the accuracy, beat arrow and amplitude are all very healthy. This is my second watch with this PT5000 movement and both perform out of the box pretty well. Bracelet. Okay, we have here quite a well-engineered stainless steel bracelet. San Martin used rivets. The rivets are not just for decoration, but actually holding the bracelet links together. We have solid end links and solid links, and we have screws, not pins. Hence the bunch of tools supplied by San Martin, so we can actually easily adjust the bracelet on our own. If this bracelet looks familiar, there is a good reason. It is very similar to San Martin Retro Diver 6200. The main difference between the two bracelets is the shape of the end links, which is to be expected given the different watch cases. I will address the end links in more detail in a moment. Looking at the clasp, this is one of my favorite clasps. It is milled, very well engineered and well put together. It is robust and smooth in operation and it is very slim. It does have four micro adjustments and this time all four of them work because San Martin used a longer link with a flush screw here. There is no on the fly extension, which seems to be a thing with pretty much all San Martin bracelets. And another consideration that you need to be aware of if you decide to buy this watch is the shape and the size of the end links. At the first glance, we have a solid, well engineered flush with the case end links, and they look pretty good. And due to a good curvature, they will allow this watch to sit well on the wrists, probably from 6.5 inches and up. I think ideally San Martin should have used inverted links here, the same actually as on the Tudor Black Bay. The current end links are a bit on the larger side, resulting, as we saw earlier, in the end link to end link distance of 54.5 mm, which is quite long. And together with a quite flat case, this can result in the look of a small dinner plate on the wrists smaller than 6.5 inches. Luckily, there is no shortage of 20 mm straps that we can use with this watch. I especially like the look on the boom strap. I think it works quite well with the overall aesthetics of this watch and also the thin profile of this watch allows it to sit very well on top of the boon strap. San Martin also included a NATO style strap with this watch, so here how this watch looks on that strap. And again, a thin case profile works very well on the NATO style strap as well. Okay, the good, the bad and the price. This is already turning into a bit of a long video and as I already listed all the considerations that you should keep in mind, so let's get straight to the point and address sort of elephant in the room, the price. But just before we move on, if you find this video helpful so far, give us a like. I heard YouTube algorithm kind of likes it. Now, first of all, I'm not here to preach to San Martin how to set their prices and I'm not going to defend the price of this watch either. And personally, I changed my opinion about the price of this watch at least three times in the last three days. So let's put all the facts on the table here and see where we get. So first, of course, we have all the premium materials, then the design of this watch, and I'm not talking about the style, but rather about craftsmanship that went into developing of this watch. And I confirm this with San Martin, the head of the watch was pretty much redesigned from ground up. And this, of course, includes crystal and the dial and bezel and, of course, the actual case. The bracelet was at least partially redesigned and, of course, we get a premium movement inside. Also, I've noticed that with San Martin watches, the loom tends to be always just that little bit stronger. The sapphire crystal tends to read a notch higher compared to other sapphire crystals and the crown seems always be just that much a little bit smoother even compared to watches with the same movement and this watch is no exception. The quality and the quality control, the attention to details and tolerances are all on a high level here. No corners cut, all the hallmarks of at least $500 price point watch. However, we need to keep in mind that $330 to $460 US dollars is a very competitive territory of countless macro brands and very established Japanese, Swiss and of course Chinese manufacturers like Seagull for example which at this price point offers solid original designs and even in-house movements. So, while looking how to square the circle, I put out a poll mixing in various brands, including some Swiss-made homage brands and San 
Yamaha 10 came out noticeably ahead, which is kind of interesting and maybe not so much, taking into account that a lot of viewers of this channel are potentially Sanma 10 fans. So, whichever way you look at it, the fact remains, based on the actual numbers sold of this watch by San Martin, there is a strong demand for a quality watch of this particular style. What do you think after watching all the details in this video? Of course, please let us know in the comments. And if you find this review helpful, do smash that like button and of course subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you for watching, take care and I will see you in the next one.